or in the case of metric, that'll be an eight millimeter drill, eight millimeter drill. And I'll drop into the cutter and change that to uh, 0.312 or eight millimeters. I'll even change the tip to uh, 118, and I'll leave the rest of the fields as they were in OK. So now we have a 312 drill. Uh, if we go back to our features, uh, we can grab one of the other operations that's doing a spot drill and a drill. Probably not that one because it's going to have different depths. Uh, I'd grab these, these two here. I'm going to take these two operations, both of them, and do a right click copy. And I'm going to jump up here to my four hole and do a right click and a paste. And it's going to paste both those operations onto that. Uh, now we want to edit it, of course, because it's the wrong size drill. So we double click the drill, drop in here and change this from the 257 to the 312 or 8 millimeter. Uh, now the depth it gets from the model, so that's actually good. It got that depth and it's pecking and that all looks fine. Uh, I'm going to hit OK. And so the spot drill is OK. Uh, you don't have to go that deep. You can go shallower if you want because we're really not going to, it's not big enough to do the, the uh, counterbores anyway. And now the next thing we want to do is to actually cut the counterbores. Now a way to cut the counterbores of this hole pattern, even though there are two holes here, is if you wanted, we could use that spiraling that we did earlier. Remember our spiraling? We could take that spiraling operation, do a right click and a copy, and jump up here and grab four hole and do a paste. And it creates a spiraling operation, which in fact cuts both holes. Uh, and we're going to want to come back and do some cleanup. Now the cleanup on this, on this wall, because remember we left stock, uh, is uh, we can create the feature easily enough by just picking this face and going into our features and doing a wall. That will create that feature just like that. It will be perfect for that. Uh, we could also do the same thing here. If we were to pick uh, tangent faces, which are, we're already in tangent faces in our grouping properties, pick a face. It picks all the tangent faces. And if we do another uh, wall, that will create this wall. Now that wall looks good. In fact, it, it is a, nothing wrong with that wall, except for the fact that I might need to later come in and do some uh, uh, do some machining in this in these corners. And one of the things we remember from uh, rest machining is it looks at the depth of the feature. And so rest machine would rest machine from here all the way to the bottom. So that's really not going to be a good good fit for us. Uh, now we could manually alter the feature. I could physically take this feature and move it down to the top of this plane here. Uh, but but uh, I think there's another way we might tackle this. What we might want to do is take this face and split it across here so we can create a, a, a different feature. And of course that's done by going into our, our uh, Create Solid Modeler and we can do a split faces. Now here's a case where I think shortest path will be a very easy way of doing this. So I click the arrow and I pick the face I want to split and it's going to ask me for two points. Point one can be the vertex at the end of the top here. Right click till I get this vertex here. And then point two, make sure, always make sure you click the arrow to activate that field. Well, point two will be over here. Right click till I get that vertex right there. And you see the line that's drawn across. That would be where the split will take place. And I do want to split the face. I really don't need a curve, so I'll say no and I'll hit OK. That will split that face. Uh, now if I hold my shift key down and pick here, it's going to pick all the other faces, but if I hold the control key down and pick this face, you see now we have a nice clean set of faces that we can go to our wall with. And now this 8 profile looks like this, which would be just fine. Create the operation that we're after. We're going to select that feature, which we just, we just constructed this feature. And we're going to go in and create an operation. And the operation we're going to create is going to be a wrap contouring operation. Be wrap contouring. In wrap contouring, we're going to select that half inch end mill with the 30 thousandths corner radius right here. And we're now going to plug in some feeds and speeds. No surprise, we're not going to go into a big debate about feeds and speeds. Next page, wrap though. Now, here, when we go to the wrap page, and of course, just like before, this feature is on the cylinder. Therefore, we don't have to worry about working diameter. We do need to make sure that we've set for OD, which is the default, by the way. Uh, but now we need to talk about the move type. Now, if we take a look at the move types, we have radial wall, which keeps the edge of the tool off center. We also have radial tool axis, which keeps the center of the tool on center line. 
Now, really, neither of these is really suitable. What we really want to do is we need a scenario like sh what is shown in this example, where the tool remains off-center. This cut, now A is plus, A is minus, A is plus. So you see a lot of stuff going on. A is going on both sides of the part. We can actually uh, change the way the, that the motion takes place by going in on the axes themselves and changing their motion. Let's say I didn't want to go minus at all. I'll say 0 and 120. Now, it could be that these values will be too restrictive and won't allow the tool to actually reach the locations. And if so, it will actually tell us that. When I fire off simulation and I go start cutting, it will actually warn me if I cannot reach a level, a location for the position. Should be able to get there, though. Now, you see now what's happening, instead of that going to minus 45, A is going to positive 45, and C is going to a different rotation angle. Now, we go, now we're rotating. Now, you see how we're doing much less rotation of the A axis than we were a moment ago. Go back and do our extrude draft on this surface, this element here, along this direction. And it still says 6 inches down here, so I'll just hit Enter. And the direction is going up, and I say yes, and no draft, and it creates that surface. Now, to do a, a trim, and that's the next thing we're going to do is a trim, you must have a surface curve. And so we're going to create a surface curve by doing an intersect surfaces between this surface and this surface. And now I have intersect surfaces. Now, let's say that I want to get rid of or trim off the inside portion of this vertical surface. So what I do is I go in and I select Trim. When I pick Trim, it says select the surface area to be trimmed. Now, what this means is you're going to pick the surface that you're going to trim, but you're going to pick the side of the surface you want to get rid of. So I'm going to pick below here, below this surface curve. I'll click down here. I'll do a right click, say I don't want that, I want that surface, and I say yes. You pick the surface curve and say yes, and it trims off that surface to the surface curve. So you can see how that surface has now been trimmed to my surface curve. Now the other big change I want to make is where it says change pass start position. Now we left it on no on our first attempt. And uh, I'm going to change this to yes. Now the purpose of this is that when you have a group of, of faces, in this case a freeform feature, that is a closed feature, meaning that the tool is going to go all the way around the part, uh, then this becomes a really important setting. Uh, what's going to happen is with Z-Level, as you saw in the previous operation, after each pass it has to transition to the next level. And uh, of course that transition can take place at the same spot. And the problem with that is, is Typically, you'll end up with little knit lines on the body of the, of the part that you can see where the tool has changed directions to go down to the next level. It's all created by tool pressure, uh, the direction of the cut, a number of factors that can cause this little bit of a tool mark. But by changing this to yes for change pass start position, you're going to, to minimize or really mask that, that, that step over by placing it at a different place with each pass. And the whole purpose of that is to get a much smoother result. Now the rest of these settings I'll leave as they are. We'll go over to the limits page, and we have a top and bottom limit. Now one of the things about these limits I want to point out is that while they are accurate in that they are getting the information from the freeform feature, uh, you can at times alter these. Like if I wanted to start a bit higher up on the part, I might change this to zero. So that's just the settings things that you can do if needed. Uh, the tool position on check surface. I'm going to change that to extend slightly outside so I get all the way to the floor and I'm going to extend it to the outside by about 20 thousandths. Uh, no boundary here so we'll skip that. We'll go to the links page and on the links page you see that the approaches and feed links there are some defaults that were plugged in. Now I'm okay with some of these settings like for example on the approach the vertical then radius of course we can edit any of the values if we wish uh, but this of course would be our primary uh, uh, approach uh, if, if there are situations where that doesn't fit, it will move on to the next one, which is a lateral. Very similar, except it's a straight line instead of an arc. And then, of course, we have a ramp if necessary. 
Now on the feed link side, uh, what I want to do is I want to, I want to kind of focus on this so smooth arc setting. Uh, so I'm going to take this smooth arc with the settings as they are now. I'm going to move it up in my list to make it the most prominent uh, feed length method. So it's going to try to use it first. And when that doesn't work, it'll use the in contact. And then after that, it'll use linear if needed. So let's create the toolpath and let's see the difference this time. Now the big thing you're going to notice is that when it has to change from one level to another, what you're going to see is you'll see these loops going off the part. It's going to loop like so to get off the part. Now that is the setting in the operation. I'll put the operation here. That's the setting in the operation, smooth arc. The smooth arc is causing it to actually go off the part, create these little one eighth uh, uh, inch uh, lateral moves, and then making a smooth arc loop to cut to the next level. So we'll let it calculate the motion to cut inside of each of these three small cutouts. So now we have our toolpath identified. And it's gone in and cut out those areas. Uh, well, it didn't get cut was this area over here. Didn't quite cut out that particular one. Uh, let's take a look at what we have. Okay. Let's go window into there, see what we have going on there. Make sure it's not an issue with my feature. Ah, I see the issue. You see the also the direction of the feature is going this way? Okay. I didn't make sure that direction of the feature was right. See, I need to make sure I reverse the direction of this feature so that the left side is to the inside. So if that ever happens to you, you got two out of three or whatever the number is, check and make sure that you get your features going the right direction. Uh, so I'll simply go in and do a right click on that operation and do a uh, rebuild. Rotation page, if I say normal to the model, that could present some problem because technically the uh, the freeform feature, the faces of the freeform feature, these faces go underneath this wall. So really that's not a good choice. What I think is a good choice here is to use a through point method. And I can use a point that's already in the, on the screen or I simply click the arrow and pick a point say out in the middle of my slot. And then I'm going to go in and tell it I don't have any angle limitations, so I'll say no, no limitations here. And I also want to make sure I'll, I'll allow some auto tilt if necessary. I'll give it a free auto tilt if needed. And we'll go to links page, and we'll say within the operation of let's say uh, uh, point point one, point two fifty, and then we've got the other settings for the feed links, and a bridge vertical is probably enough. And let's hit OK. So it's basically the toolpath, because of the cross-section of the plane we've chosen, the toolpath is going to go back and forth this way. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of toolpath. Let's take a look at what the simulation of that toolpath looks like. Tilt because of where the through-point is, trying to reach down in there. So really that through-point method probably wasn't the best choice. Um, the through point was probably okay, but really where that point was, it was really not a good point because what we told it was, this location was of, of X and Y is okay, but see how Z is zero? It's trying to pivot through a point down at zero. Let's bump this Z up to let's say about four inches. So we're moving the pivot point up. Let's hit okay again. So that pivot point is not just an XY location, it's really an XY and Z. And so by having that pivot point down at Z zero, we're forcing the tool, tool to tilt a great distance to reach from that point. Now you see a very different toolpath. So if we go in and run a simulation of that, it's going to follow that point, but that point has been shot up at four inches. So that point is sitting up here. And so the tool will, will remain passing through that point up at, say, four inches above the part. Now one other thing I want to, want to point out too is very important, especially when cutting these types of impellers, is the choice right, up, right below cut all blades, machining priority. Now machining priority, if it's left on region, which is the default, it's going to stay in one blade and finish that blade all the way down to the hub. 
actually rough is what we're doing now, but it's going to remove all this material before it goes to the next blade. Uh, if we say level, it's going to go ahead, since we have cut all blades set to yes, it's going to go ahead and cut all the way around at one level, then go to the next level, work all the way around and all the way around. That'll give you more even a removal of material, and that's that can be a big issue on a, on a blade like this, in that uh, you probably, probably want to make sure this is set on level pretty much at all times uh, when you're cutting all the blades. Now, of course, if you're doing the strategy I said earlier, which was uh, uh, to cut one blade, maybe use some sort of subroutine, if you will, uh, then level doesn't gain you anything, uh, because obviously you wouldn't want to do that. But if you're trying to create one continuous program to do this entire blade, uh, then um, cutting all blades, yes, is, is what you want to do. But also, the machining priority level is a much better strategy for more even removal of material. So we have a yes, we have level for the machining priority, we have a roll around edges, yes, with a roll around top and bottom, and we're telling it the roll extension alignment is yes as well. So we hit OK, we let it crunch on process and toolpath. It's going to take a little while because it's obviously creating now uh, nine times the, the toolpath that it did before because it's now going to create cut and cut all nine blades as opposed to one blade. And now we're finished. And of course it does all the blades and we're going to get a message. And of course if you've, if you've not been clearing this area, you want to look at the message at the very bottom. That's the one that deals with this particular operation. So right now I'll go ahead and clear this. Do right click clear and then close this. And now we see that operation. Now the rolling around edge you'll notice is of course not taking place during the blade itself. It's not trying to roll around the splitter. It's rolling around from one blade to the next blade. So you can see the one that's taking place at the bottom, that's pretty clear. And then the one at the top you can kind of see as well as it rolls around from one blade to the next. 